In today's video, I'm excited to bring to you a review of a Pioneer multi-boat. Hello, James Hogan here with Kylie Marina bringing you the best tips and tools to help build the right Pioneer boat for you. On this channel, we do Pioneer boats and engine reviews, so you should consider subscribing. If there's a video that you'd like to see from us in the future, please feel free to comment below. In today's video, we're going to be showing you the Pioneer Multi Dark Line, um, which is obviously this lovely dark grey colour that we've got here. This boat is extremely dynamic, which makes it very popular in both the leisure and commercial worlds. On this boat, uh, there's enough space for the whole family. So whether you want to go out fishing, do a bit of exploring with some island hopping, um, or even some high speed water sports, you'll be able to do all of that with this boat. From a commercial perspective, lots of our customers over the years have been from flood and rescue organizations, diving centers, or even tourism. Um, one of the main reasons for this, is I'll take you to the front here, is the drop down bow here, the door. That's for easy loading, uh, which means it's easy for these guys to haul people out of the water or to load, uh, load their passengers and equipment on and off. Part of the success of the Pioneer Multi is uh, its unique and advanced design of the catamaran hull. Um, what they've got is they've got air pushing up on the hull constantly. So as you're riding along, it pushes the boat up, which means it planes much faster than other boats. And it also means it's more efficient when it's up and out of the water. The further advantages of having a catamaran hull is the boat is balanced on two keels, which gives you more stability when you're on the deck and it means it's less likely to rock. Um, also, with a catamaran hull, it means you've got a shallower, um, shallower base than you would do with a V-hull, which makes it much better for, for, for getting in and out of, uh, of shallow water. I'll just take you around here on the boat next. At the front of the boat here, we've got this bow rail. Um, now this is important for the sort of design of the boat because it's at the front where you tend to do most of your loading with a multi. So it just gives your passengers something to hold on to when you're getting on and off the boat. It also means if you're stepping from the side here again, you've just got something to, to grab onto while climbing on and off. Um, so it's an important safety feature. Continuing on the, the handrail uh, theme here, um, for me, they're just a huge safety point um, for your passengers and, on, and people on board. I'll show you inside in a few seconds, um, you'll see that there, there's seat boxes, so your passengers have got something to hold on to when they're sat in the seat boxes, or even just moving around the deck, if there's a bump, they've got something to grip onto as opposed to just falling, um, falling over. And again, at the rear, if you've got somebody next to you there um, on the helm seat, they've just got something to grip onto. You can see as well, we've got a fender tied onto the, uh, the handrail here. Yes, plastic is pretty indestructible, but uh, these guys just stop you getting more scratches than you desire on your boat. Um, like I so say, you can, you can mend scratches on the multi, but just when you get your new boat, it's good to keep it quite proper. Uh, you might have noticed as we've travelled around the boat that there's actually four cleats on the boat. That's just easy for tying on, uh, tying on and off the boat, especially if you're new to boating. If you've got a cleat, you can simply wrap an 0800 round there um, and you're good to go. Whereas it can be quite a bit trickier using the lifting eyes if you're, you're not as experienced. Um, in the corner here, we've got your boarding ladder. Uh, now this is useful if you've got people in the, in the water doing water sports or anything like that. It's just in case they step up on there um, and then the hull itself, you've got two further steps which just easily gets you on and you've got plenty of places to grip um, as you travel up there. This brings us nicely onto our engine. Um, so this customer here has chosen to go for an 80 horsepower Yamaha. Um, it's a four stroke engine with electric trim and tilt. Um, the 80 horsepower is actually the largest you can put on the Pioneer Multi, but trust me, it gives it enough performance out there zipping along. Um, it gets up onto the plane absolutely fine and uh, it's, re it's really quite impressive. The last thing I'm going to show you on the outside of the boat is our auxiliary engine setup. Um, now it's important to have an auxiliary obviously because if your main engine fails, um, it's got you a means of stabilizing the craft while you get, uh, you get help. We've got quite a unique design on the, uh, on the auxiliary itself. We put an enforced um, plate here. Um, it's just so we've strengthened up the, the plastic area so you don't have this weight bouncing just on the plastic and it could rip off. Um, so that's the meaning for the plate and we bolt all through there. Um, again, he's gone for a nice Yamaha um, six horsepower engine there. It's a manual start, um, but it, it, the idea is to, to, to stabilize the vessel while you get called for help. So welcome aboard the Pioneer Multi. We'll start at the front.
But at the front of the multi here, we've got its iconic drop-down bow door. Um, you can see that it's just simply hooked in here um, with a couple of clips, um, both made from stainless steel, um, so they're not going to rust on you there. And then once they're unclipped, it's a case of going in this locker here, picking up the handle, and popping it in there. Obviously we're not in the water at the moment so I can't show you um, how it goes down but it's very simple to use. It's just a case of twisting the winch handle there. Um, like I say they're all stainless steel um, so you've got the longevity in the in the bow door mechanism there. So across from the, the winch handle there, um, you've got almost a mirrored um, compartment here, but as you'll see, it's just a, an empty storage locker. Um, so you've got plenty of space to put whatever you need um, in there. And as, as, as I take a seat, um, you'll notice that there's a hatch. Um, now we've actually got hatches across um, all of the boat. The reason being is we prefer to bolt in um, our handrails and our cleats. It just means that uh, you get a more of a secure finish than whatever you were to self-tap. You are fine to self-tap accessories onto Pioneers, but it's just our preference um, is bolting it through. And it also gives you better access for between the skins, um, which is what your condensation bung at the bottom here um, gives you also. Because the multi is double skinned, um, over time through condensation, you can sometimes get water between the skins. So it's important to have these bungs. You just unscrew them and you can put a pump down there and get it all pumped out. Um, so it's quite a clever design really. So ahead of me here you've got the seat boxes. Now that's handy for uh, obviously sitting and storage because if I clip open this lid here um, we've still got some of the customers bits and pieces in there but you've almost got the space of the seat box itself as a void to put any bits and pieces that you want um, in there. You can put up to two passengers on there as well. Now the cushion it's an important thing to mention because you might see that uh, they are quite expensive um, on, on the simulator. There's a reason for that. The cushions are actually made out of the polyethylene material similar to the boat. Um, so they're really durable, weatherproof uh, and comfortable and they're a nice finish on the top there. Um, they used to have the spongy material which used to sag after a while. So they've kind of, they've upgraded their cushions which is why they're a little bit more expensive but uh, for me they're, they're certainly worth it. So just above uh, the, the seat box here, you can see the lifting eyes. They're on the four corners of the boat. Um, that just makes it really easy for lifting the boats on and off a trailer and in and out the water of a forklift. You can just put your slings there. It's the, the most solid parts of the boat. Um, so it just gives it even maneuverability if you're going from in and out of the water, if you don't have access to a slipway. You've also got, uh, again, more of these hatches because this handrail here is bolted down through there. Um, and you've got some grab handles on the inside, just so you've got more than one place to, to hold on to if you're if you're sitting down. So I've taken a seat at the front here just to show you the full deck space. So this customer has uh, decided to go for two um, additional seat boxes because he's got a mixture of leisure, fishing uh, and taking the family out in the boat. So he's got nice storage um, and he's got plenty of deck space as well. You can get up to four additional seat boxes um, onto the deck of the multi here. Um, that's if you want to take lots of family members out or lots of passengers um, out exploring. That means you have plenty of space, plenty of storage. A lot of our commercial customers choose to have have no additional seat boxes because it means they've got the full deck space for their equipment. Um, so it just depends really how you want to lay out the boat, um, but it's a nice option. Like I say, if you take the option of the seat box, you've got great storage and great seating. So I'll move oh, a little bit to the back of the boat here. At the front of this console, you can see that there's another storage compartment. We'll just take a peek of what's inside. So they just twist off there. So the customer's gone for a dual battery setup for this boat um, as he's potentially going to add a line hauler um, once he gets a hold of the boat. You can run the multi just off a single battery, um, but it's just on your preference. So he's got his battery and his battery boxes in there to make them nice and waterproof. But again, you've got a very generous storage space um, in that front of that console. I'll just point out this uh, neat little cup holder. Uh, I think every boat should have a cup holder. So the Maltese one is just there on the, on the passenger side of the rear seat bench. I know we've talked a lot about uh, storage on the boat um, at the front, but for me, you can never have too much storage on a boat, especially if it's as practically as used as it has on the Maltese. Let's open the rear seat bench.
Um, so on the Pioneer Multi, it's still an external fuel tank here. So we've got a nice Yamaha 25 litre tank that you can just clip in with the line there and out through the back. Either side of your fuel tank, you've got more storage space, as we say, um, to have any bits and pieces that, that, that you need. This moves us on to the backrest. Um, it's quite flexible in the fact that you can maneuver it up and down. That's great if you want to get into your rear seat bench, as I just did there, or if you need to, to get access to, to either your bunk um, or any of your, your components of the engine there. So it's quite helpful. It's also super comfy Ugh. if you're skippering the boat, so you've got something to support your back. Our backrest is attached onto the A-frame, so there's a few nifty features um, on this boat here. You've got your rod holders there for your fishing rods, you've got your navigation lights, as well as your aerial for your radio. This customer here has opted to go for a deck light, uh, just in case the weather changes when you're out there or you want to do anything at night. So the customer has uh, opted to go for a radar reflector. This just means you can be seen by larger vessels when out on the water um, in terms of their navigation system. So I lift the backrest here again, um, just to show you, you've got your bung. It's just a lever bung um, in the rear here. Pioneer boats are self-draining, um, but we've got a bilge pump underneath here just to help with some of the deck water and rainwater, especially if the boat's gonna be left on a trailer. It just allows it to, to, to pump out. And uh, the non-negotiable at the back here is we've got a fuel water separator because it just keeps your fuel clean um, in, your, in your fuel intake. Finally, this is where the magic happens, the steering console. So to get all your electrics working, you've got to turn on your isolator switch, so just twist that round there, that gets both your batteries going. You've got your switch panel here, your six-way switch panel. So I'll just click on all these here to show you how they work. So once you've got all your electrics working, um, you can use the, the bilge pump here. Um, all the switches we use are Blue Sea systems as they're waterproof and premium quality switches, um, which means they're gonna last a, a while. The customer has op opted to go for two screens. Um, he's gone for the Raymarine Element 7. Um, you can put both into one, but he preferred to have uh, a fish finding screen, um, the one that gives him his depth and his chart plotter on the other one. Um, so it's just the, the customer's preference there. The, the Yamaha gauge that we've got here gives him his speed, it gives him his trim and tilt and his fuel as well as the hours used. It's touchscreen as well, it's a touchscreen LED um, inbuilt screen there. And the final one is your VHF radio. Um, this is still to be registered but again it's an important safety feature and one that we recommend with all of our boat builds because it just means you've got a constant means. Um, an important feature about this one is the distress button as well. So if you get into any bother it's just a case of pressing the button and then the Coast Guard will come rescue you. Lastly, we've got the screen and the screen grab rail. Now, the screen is very important for many things. If it's windy um, or it's cold or you've got uh, the rain, it just gives you a layer of protection as you're, uh, as you're driving the boat. Um, so it really takes the wind chill, especially in Scotland. And the grab rail, again, when you're just moving around, it protects the windscreen so you've got something to hold on to. And for safety, like I say many times, it's just handy to have something to, to hold on to if you, get a, if you get a mock or something like that. And that's our Pioneer Multi Darkline. Go to www pioneerboat.co.uk where you see there's an interactive build your boat simulator which gives you pricing as well as dealer locations across the UK. To learn more tips and tools about Pioneer Boats and how to build and buy the right boat for you, consider subscribing.